Hi, I'm Brandy with the Springs Preserve. Let's talk about Integrated Pest Management, or IPM. As a gardener, you'll probably become good at insect identification. It's important to know what you're seeing so you can make a smart decision on how to proceed. Just because you see an insect, don't panic. Some are beneficial and others can do some damage, but they're still not an instant cause for alarm. It's important to know the difference between good and bad bugs. Often, even if you notice harmful bugs on your crops, nature normally takes its course. Within days of noticing aphids in my garden, I watched ladybugs and praying mantis appear, and then birds came to feed on these little protein snacks. And within a week, there were more beneficial insects than those doing damage to my plants, and they stuck around and started reproducing. If I had panicked and treated them with something, I'd have missed out on nature's display and also on having many of those animals that help keep my garden in balance. Even if you're familiar with the good and bad bugs, be aware that many have multiple life stages. For example, most of us are familiar with what ladybugs look like, but we don't often know what the larvae look like. And that's because that's the wicked stage when they're eating a lot of aphids per day and they really look like it. Having healthy plants is the first step to avoiding pests and disease. Make sure your garden soil has plenty of organic matter, that it holds water well so plants aren't easily drought stressed, and that nutrients are available to crops because stressed plants are more susceptible to pests and disease. Like humans, they need water and food and a healthy environment to better fight illness. So focus on giving your plants what they need and you probably will have very few issues. It's important to first determine how much plant damage you're willing to tolerate. Are you okay with a few leaves being nibbled, which means your garden is just a piece of the larger ecosystem? The goal with integrated pest management is to do the least amount of harm to human health and the environment while still managing your crops. This might mean you allow for a few pests to remain and then let nature's natural pest control work out a balance. But if damage or pest numbers get too large, there are solutions to nearly every garden pest that won't harm you, the environment, or other beneficial insects. And any treatment used should only target the specific pest you're trying to remove. Many of the good bugs are pollinators. To keep them healthy and visiting your plants, it's important to use no or safer pesticides and avoid using systemic insecticides. These travel throughout all of the plant tissues and they can remain in a plant for a year or more. These can harm or kill pollinators as they feed on pollen and nectar. It's really important to consider this because any plants within a few miles can impact birds, bees, and butterflies. So you and your neighbors play a really critical role in the larger health of the ecosystem. Visit your plants regularly. By checking on them, you can catch any potential issues before they become problems and watch them closely while you determine how to proceed. Pests often like lingering beneath leaves or in nooks and crannies of plants. So this is where they're harder to spot for us. So when we're looking, you wanna be looking all in uh, leaves, nooks and crannies, and the undersides of leaves particularly to see what's going on. Some common signs of garden pests are speckled or stippled leaves where piercing insects are sucking the juices from plants. You can see chewed edges or missing leaves and stems from caterpillars or grasshoppers. If leaves have tiny holes, that can be caused by flea beetles. Large circles missing from leaves could be leaf cutter bees. And sticky residue is a really good indicator that you have something like aphids or mealybugs as they excrete the honeydew. And ants will farm these insects, moving them around from plant to plant so they can harvest the honeydew. So if you see ants on your plants, that's often a really good early indicator that you may have some other issues. There are ways to encourage beneficial insects and predators to your garden. And I like to do this by planting some companion plants. A lot of herbs and other flowering plants will draw these to your yard, and some grow really well with specific crops. You can buy and release ladybugs in your yard, but without enough pests for them to feed on, they'll leave looking for food. Also, local insects, local ladybugs, they're better adapted to our environment, and they'll find pests on their own. But once they move in, they're likely to stick around and reproduce. Now, if you're spraying to remove all the aphids or pests in your garden, you'll also be removing the food source for many beneficial insects who'll have nothing to eat. So if you can stand to leave a few around, you'll be rewarded with a rich and vibrant garden. If you do decide to treat your plants for insects, be sure you know what you have. You definitely don't wanna be applying something that's gonna harm the beneficial insects. I generally start out with the least harmful method, a forceful jet of water. And that's often enough to dislodge many pests and it can cause physical harm to soft-bodied insects. So if there are a lot of insects, I'll spray them down and often that'll take those numbers back to a manageable level. 
If there are a ton of insects on plant stems and leaves, I often just run my hands along the stems and squish them. It's kind of gross, but it's safe and quick and free. So this plant has some aphids on it. It's going to seed now, but it's covered in aphids and I'm just going to squeeze and squish and run my hands down that a few times. Again, it's a little bit gross, but it's harmless and it's free and quick. That's gonna take those pest populations down to a level where I'm comfortable leaving it to let nature run its course. A lot of these sprays here are going to treat many of those softer bodied insects. After I use water, if I need to use something else, I often just go to rubbing alcohol. I use 70 to 90%, you can use a lot less. I normally just use that with no harm because I can then also sterilize my cutting implements at the same time. But using a rubbing alcohol in the early morning or later in the evening is going to work really well for almost every insect pest that I encounter. You can also buy some other products. You can buy insecticidal soap or neem oil. Just follow the directions really closely. And again, with any of these liquid products, spray early in the morning or after the sun starts to set so you don't cause harm during the heat of the day. And it's good to always test plant response by treating a small section before you treat all of your plants. You can use cornmeal, bran meal, or diatomaceous earth, or even wood ashes. And those can be sprinkled in a circle around the plants and that will kill or prevent many crawling insects from reaching your plants. If you have persistent pests that live in the soil, make sure you remove all debris and weeds. And after crops are harvested, till your soil under to a depth of six to eight inches, and a few weeks later, again, to about two inches, which will bring them to the surface to be eaten by birds. BT, or Bacillus thuringiensis, is a bacteria that's specific to targets caterpillars, and it won't harm non-target species. Additionally, there are many traps that are useful for lots of other animals like aphids and white flies. You can place these really close to plants. I put them right next to or sometimes in the same pot as the plants and ruffle up the leaves if I have something like white flies that are moving very regularly. That traps them and then you can decrease those numbers and also see how many pests you really have. Encourage beneficial insects like lacewings, ladybugs, praying mantis, and aphid midges and wasps. I often see evidence of aphid wasps because they leave behind an aphid mummy. It's a tan inflated aphid body where the wasp has killed the aphid and emerged. So I know that things are starting to strike a balance when I see those mixed amongst the bodies of aphids that are living on my plants. Let's go over some common pests you may encounter on garden plants. Many of these pests can cause secondary damage from bacteria or viruses. Mealybugs are white or gray soft-bodied insects found in nooks and crannies of plants. The liquid sprays I mentioned can be really effective at keeping them in check. White flies are tiny white-winged insects that fly away when disturbed. You can use yellow sticky traps or spray them in mid-air or quickly douse the leaves before they take off. Aphids are yellow, green, orange, gray, and black, and they're tiny and pear-shaped with little antennae. Mealybugs, whiteflies, and aphids suck sap, and they excrete honeydew, which can cause sooty mold. And again, ants are gonna farm all of these insects. You can hose them off, squash them with your hands, or use any of the liquid sprays that I mentioned. Caterpillars, this is something to be really careful of because you may have the juvenile form of butterflies and moths that you want to bring to your garden. So again, make sure that you know what you've got. You don't want to remove the caterpillar of a butterfly you were hoping for, like a swallowtail or a painted lady that often visit common garden plants. Caterpillars can be hand-picked and tossed to birds, or again, you can use BT, which is non-toxic to other beneficials. Cabbage looper is something that can target many common crops. They eat ragged holes in the leaves and it ends up weakening or killing plants. So rotating crops can help with this. And again, remove all garden debris and transplant larger seedlings of susceptible plants so they can more easily withstand the damage. It's really useful to put companion plants around or you could spray deterrents or use row covers on younger plants. And again, you can hand pick them and remove or use BT. Tomato and tobacco hornworms are something we see a lot on our solanaceous crops in the Southwest. So things like peppers, tomatoes, eggplants, they are animals that are going to become 
very large caterpillars in a very short amount of time. And you might have one of these plants that looks perfect one day, you come out in the morning and half your plant is missing. They do a ton of damage. And for these, I hand pick them and relocate them either to a wild datura plant or I toss them far from plants. I really love the sphinx moth or the hummingbird moth that they become. They're really massive, beautiful things, but I don't want them to be eating all of my crops. Cutworms can chew through stems, so you can use a collar made of a toilet paper roll cut in half. Just insert that one inch deep into the soil and leave about a couple inches so they can't crawl into those seedlings and do damage. Mexican bean beetles are oval with yellow and gold, 16 yellow and gold spots on the wing covers. And the larva is found on bean plants. You can use row covers or hand pick them, plant a soybean trap crop, or again, insecticidal soaps or any of these liquid treatments that we mentioned. Flea beetles are small, dark beetles that jump when you look at them. They can affect most vegetable crops. They chew lots of small holes in leaves and they can eat roots. So use row covers, garlic spray, or white sticky traps for them. The grape leaf skeletonizer is a cute black moth with striped larva that can do a lot of damage. They'll defoliate leaves and cause fruit damage on grapes. You can use BT for this. Leaf cutter bees are really not a pest, but they can cause some minor yet adorable leaf damage. They leave three quarter inch perfect circles missing from your leaf edges, and they use these to line their nests, making a tiny pollen and nectar burrito for their eggs to feed on. If you see these perfect round pieces missing, there's no need to worry. Just know that you're supporting a very important pollinator in your garden. And again, they will leave these beautiful, perfect round holes uh, in your leaves. So it can do a little temporary damage, but most plants can grow right out of it. Pests will probably be something you will have to deal with on occasion. But by keeping plants healthy, by enriching your soils with proper watering and planting the right crops at the right times, you can help to minimize pest problems. Visit your garden regularly so you can watch and catch any issues before they become problems, and you can enjoy the thriving ecosystem you're helping to create.